Ibiar. During her victory speech on Tuesday night, Hillary Clinton looked ahead to the general election, attacking Donald Trump. The stakes in this election are high, and the choice is clear. Donald Trump is temperamentally unfit to be president and He's not just trying to build a wall between America and Mexico. He's trying to wall off Americans from each other. When he says, let's make America great again, that is code for, let's take America backwards. That was Hillary Clinton last night, and Donald Trump gave his victory speech at his country club in Briarcliff Manor, New York. Uh, it was the first time uh, during this campaign that he was using a teleprompter. His campaign uh, said that he wrote the script, uh, along with his inner circle, uh, discussing people like his daughter Ivanka Trump. Um, Dolores Huerta, the issue of the wall has been in the forefront in the last few days, because Donald Trump has raised it. He's trying to get the judge to recuse himself, who is overseeing the civil lawsuit uh, against his now-defunct Trump University, where students are accusing him of defrauding them out of millions of dollars. Uh, he says that the judge, Gonzalo Curiel, a federal judge, cannot be um, is biased simply because of his Mexican heritage, or, as he says, he's a Mexican. And he directly links it to Trump's support for the wall. Um, your response, Dolores Huerta. Well, that's a ridiculous statement. And again, he is uh, showing his overt racism that he has against uh, Latinos, especially Mexicans. And uh, to attack a judge that way is uh, un unethical and might even be uh, illegal, uh, the way that he is doing that. Uh, this is, I think, the way that Trump works. He just uh, blows a lot of smoke up there and, and blows a lot of fire. And he thinks that that is going to somehow uh, be able to uh, cover his actions uh, so that people will not see uh, what the man is and what the man does and, and what, a, what a corrupt person Donald Trump is. There's a and I know that the truth will all be coming out during this campaign. There's a very interesting— and I do want to say also— I just wanted that... to talk about the Daily News front page, um, the New York Daily News. It says, I'm with racist. Um, Trump's Mexican judge rant is the definition of racist, uh, says House Speaker Paul Ryan, but I still support him. Well, that, that's what's so sad. Uh, and I do believe that the racism in the United States of America has been so inherent and so part of the fabric of the United States of America. Hopefully, uh, with uh, Donald Trump uh, bringing it up into the forefront and his supporters bringing it up into the forefront, it will be a call to action for all of our organizations, our agencies, our institutions and government, public and private, that we have to start doing something to end racism let me and turn, sexism. Let me turn and to— I do want to say that I think a disparity Hillary Clinton, because she knows Henry Kissinger, does not mean that she advocates the policies that Henry Kissinger advocated. I think that's going a little far afield. And, uh, you know, attacking Hillary Clinton for, uh, for policies that other people have advocated or that have practiced, I believe, is wrong. And I hope that that does not continue uh, between now and uh, the time that she is running her election Norman for the President your of the United States. Norman Solomon, your response? Yes, well, they've praised each other. They've praised each other's policies. Henry Kissinger and Hillary Clinton have publicly uh, lauded each other's policies. And I agree with the uh, journalist at Consortium News, formerly at Newsweek and Associated Press, Robert Perry, who's documented uh, in great detail that uh, Hillary Clinton's policies, her advocacies for uh, foreign intervention, are essentially very similar to what we call neocon policies uh, that prevailed under the presidency of George W. Bush. It's now just called liberal interventionism. It's now called responsibility to protect, or R2P. But the bottom line is the same. So I just think we need to have a single standard of evaluating the advocacy and policies of presidential candidates. It is really fair to say 
that Hillary Clinton has advanced through her words, through her deeds as Secretary of State, policies of continual U.S. military intervention and de facto perpetual war. So I think we ought to debate that. Do we support that or not? Do we go silent about it or not? Um, I want to turn to a part of Donald Trump's speech last night. We're going to rebuild our inner cities, which are absolutely a shame and so sad. We're going to take care of our African-American people that have been mistreated for so long. Take care of our African-American people, Dolores Huerta. Uh, well, that sounds kind of a, a plantation talk, uh, very patronizing. And uh, I don't think that uh, uh, African Americans are going to be uh, are going to be fooled uh, by that kind of speech that uh, Donald Trump is now engaging. I think uh, people are too smart for that, and I'm sure that he's going to be uh, changing a lot of his rhetoric. Uh, maybe not so much against Mexicans, maybe against other people, uh, because uh, we will be seeing a change in Donald Trump by his handlers uh, to try to uh, make him more palatable, so that people will vote for him. Um, so that that will be interesting I, uh, to see that. I but, wanted to uh, go. He has shown us during uh, this election cycle uh, who he really is, and I, I don't think people will be fooled. I wanted uh, to just, turn uh, to too a, much of a record. Um, I wanted to turn to a part of Donald Trump's speech where he addressed Bernie Sanders supporters. To all of those Bernie Sanders voters who have been left out in the cold by a rigged system of superdelegates, we welcome you with open arms. <laughs> Norman Solomon, you're a Bernie Sanders delegate. You'll well, be in Philadelphia. You know, in his statement last night, Donald Trump was feeding on the ridiculous and absurd spin that has come from so much of the mass media in this country, conflating somehow the, quote, anti-establishment positions of Bernie Sanders uh, and uh, Donald Trump. As Bernie said in his speech last night, uh, Donald Trump is antithetical to uh, Bernie's values and progressive values. And the fact is that unless we're going to take on the need for democracy by challenging the power of Wall Street, then we're leaving open the door for the Donald Trumps of the world to just come right in and demagogue it out. Uh, the reality is that today, nobody who embraces the campaign of Bernie Sanders should do anything but try to defeat Donald Trump. And what Trump said last night to try to woo Bernie Sanders supporters, I think, will largely, overwhelmingly be rejected as it should be. Very quickly, <clears throat> very quickly, Norman Solomon, uh, your response to AP and NBC um, uh, calling the Democratic nomination for Hillary Clinton on the eve of the largest primary in the United States, in your state, in California. It really is an example of uh, mass media genuflecting to elites within uh, the Democratic Party, in this case, uh, superdelegates. Uh, those delegates were not elected uh, for the purpose. Some of them are lobbyists for tobacco companies and so forth. And it's a pattern where uh, AP and NBC and the major media outlets, they've been clueless for more than a year about what the Bernie Sanders campaign is all about. Uh, they thought that progressives could not mount a, an effective presidential campaign. And I think it is de facto uh, voter suppression, and more and more people are recognizing uh, that kind of media manipulation as exactly that, efforts to manipulate. I want to thank you, Norman Solomon, for joining us, a Bernie Sanders delegate, um, one of the founders of RootsAction.org. Among your books, War Made Easy, How Presidents and Pundits Are Spinning Us to Death. And Dolores Huerta, I want to stay with you for one minute to talk about Helen Chavez, the activist who played a crucial role in launching the United Farm Workers of America, who's just died at the age of 88, widow of Cesar Chavez. <laughs> who, together with you, led the United Farm Workers of America for more than three decades. In a statement honoring Helen Chavez, President Obama said, quote, she managed her union's finances, prepared meals, marched in picket lines, was even arrested for her actions, all because she believed in the dignity of America's farm workers, men and women she toiled with in the fields, even as she raised eight children and helped lead a movement. Helen Chavez died Monday in Bakersfield, California. You knew her well, is that right? 
Uh, yes, I did. Uh, Helen was a very dear, a very close friend. Uh, we worked together for many years, even before we started the United Farm Workers in the previous organization, the Community Service Organization. Uh, she was truly the foundation and a rock, and I don't think Cesar would have been able to accomplish what he did without her emotional and her physical support uh, that she gave, and uh, not just to Cesar, but to everybody in the movement, uh, the staff and volunteers, and worked diligently in, in, our, in our credit union. And I do want to say, though, that, hey, in California, we had a popular vote where Hillary Clinton won that popular vote. Huh. Well, I want to thank you for being with us, Dolores Huerta. And, 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 and by the way, Helen Chavez uh, voted in her absentee ballot for Hillary Clinton. And her, just before she passed away, she said, as soon as I get out of this hospital, I want to start doing commercials for Hillary Clinton. She was a very strong advocate for Hillary Clinton. And I know there's been some word out there that uh, the Chavez family itself was uh, supporting Bertie. No, the Caesar's wife, Caesar's children, all supported Hillary Clinton. Dolores Huerta, thanks for joining us, civil rights activist, co-founder of the United Farm Workers of America, with Cesar Chavez, president of the Dolores Huerta Foundation for Community Organizing, and a Hillary Clinton supporter.